The fire shop, please. I'll wait. Shotsy. Shotsy. What do you want? He needs to find socks in an hour. You'd better get dressed. I'll be ready. Well, you'd better be. It'll be terrible if we miss G. Oh, Paul, I'm dressed to go out right now. The flower shop, Mr. Hedge? Listen, Mr. Hedge. My girlfriend's fiancé sent us some more of those orchids, Mr. Hedge. Six of them. Beauty. Yes, but Mr. Hedge, you paid us twice as much as that for six of them last week. You mean not even stockbrokers aren't buying orchids anymore, Mr. Hedge? Well, all right, Mr. Hedge. Oh, no, I'll send them right down. Hurry up, Chastity. I am hurrying. Now, listen, Pops, and I'll tell you. I just took the money you gave me for the car and bought some more American Tell and Tell instead. Yeah, you know, Pops, a car goes out of style, but Tell and Tell goes on forever. Oh, I didn't know you were in a shower. Did you have a good time with Oscar and the medicine ball? Well, anyhow, Jean gets back today. Yeah, Jean. Yeah, I know you don't think she's in my class, but you'll have to admit she's awful good company. Yeah, besides, she's awful broke. And you know what I think, Pop? I think her stocks went down, and there she was in Paris and didn't know how to say so short in French. And anyhow, her fiancé's wife arrived, and it seems that she's a very narrow-minded person. And she bought Jean a ticket, so Jean decided to come home. Yeah, and she's on the island of France and ought to be in in about an hour. So I... <laughs> Your fee, madame. Phil? What for? For the there, madame. Forty-three dollars. It says forty-three dollars. You're trying to make me believe that I've got forty-three dollars worth of liquor since I've been on this boat? Oh, no, madame. These are only the drinks you haven't paid for yet. You mean the drinks somebody else paid for? Well, uh, yes, madame. Yes, but I haven't paid for any drinks myself. That was my point, madame. Well, don't let it throw you. This can be a way. I'll stay in the cabin over All right. Thank you, sir. Me, but Haven't I met you someplace before? Oh, but that's possible. I've been on his boat for five days. No, I don't mean that. No, I've seen you somewhere before. Was it the races? The races, uh, perhaps. I about, know it uh... was somewhere. St. Cloud. That's where it was. I couldn't forget meeting a good-looking man like you. <laughs> you know, it's the silliest thing. My stupid maid has packed my trunks, and I have a bar bill here. I'm sure she must pack my checkbook. Anyway, I, I can't find it. I wonder if you... Oh, you must allow me. Oh, no, I shouldn't have said that. I insist. How much money? Oh, no, I couldn't. It's $43. Oh, I feel terribly. I want to get a big sixty. I always believe in tipping me, don't you? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh, you're so kind. I didn't notice the small of your back. Well, you're a stranger to me, and that's the small of my back to you. Oh, no trunks, lady. No, no trunks. What do you mean, no trunks? 
I mean, the hotel in Paris thought they needed some worse than I did. Oh, well, what you need is a little drinking. Come on up to my place and have one. Sure, I sure. you could do with a little drinking. You bet, Matter, I could. Listen, do you know that they close these ship's bars for your still so bound from liquor? Oh, no. Oh, oh you need no. water. Broke. Am I broke? Oh, poor Jean. Yeah. I'll say. Well, just as long as you're back. Yes, we'll have fun anyhow, Jean. Yeah, well, I could do with some fun. If they kept all my clothes except what I got on, what's in that little black bag I sneaked out on them, and all my braces except that one I sneaked out on them too because I couldn't see letting them keep the real one. Yeah, I got nothing I can call my own except my health. Is there any wonder I wanted to see you? No, no, it's no huh? wonder. Hey, that's my gold comb. What's your comb? That's my comb. I've got my little gold comb. Have you two started stopping already? Well, now that we three are together, we can put up our feet and make a few plans. Plans? What for? For you. We can lend you clothes and we can lend you money. Huh? Well, that is some. But the first thing to do is to put you back in the swim. I'll tell you what I'll do, Jean. I'll lend you my good luck bracelet that you've always wanted. Good. You can wear it till your luck changes. And your luck will change, too, because I've had my bad dimes turned on it. You know, my ten-cent piece with a hole in it. Oh, but, well, I wouldn't want to take your bad dime. Why not? My luck's all right. Oh, you're a sport. Can't you keep anything? Why bother? I tell you what I'll do, Quilaire. Tomorrow I'll take it down to Collier's and have your bad dime sold off and put in a platinum cave with diamonds in it. Oh, that's certainly sweet of you, Jean. Not a bean in the world and talking about diamonds. You know, I don't believe any girl ever had any better friends than you two guys. And I want you to know that you haven't got any better friends than I am. Oh, that's sweet of you to say that. Gee, yeah, that's sweet. And as long as we three stick together, I don't care what happens. I don't guess you do either. And we wouldn't have broken up, only I had to go fall in love. But we're not going to break up again, not if I can help it. Because you know that I'm for you, and I know that you're for me. And there's no friends like old friends. It's the three of us. Against the men. Oh, we'll play ball. Oh, New York. And that's our plan. What are you going to do? Just a moment. Don't you worry about little Gigi. He's going to be all right. Well, I was just saying to myself this morning as I looked out of that old skyline, well, I said, if the worst comes to the worst, there's always pop. While in life, there's pop. Pop? Huh? Sure, pop. Oh, you remember pop. Oh, sure, we remember pop. What's the matter? Pops isn't dead, I hope. No, Pops isn't dead. Maybe only give Pops a ring and let him know I'm back. Just to prepare him. Oh, no, Dean, no, I wouldn't do that. Not if I were you. No, Dean, she's right. That isn't a thing to do at all. Well, why not? Hello? Is that you, Pops? Yeah, Dean's here. Guess I better call you back. Hey, what's pop to you? Now, isn't pop to pop to all of us? What's pop to you? Well, you wouldn't expect a nice girl like me to leave a kind old gentleman like pop sitting alone in the Metropolitan Club without a friend to call his own. You answer my question. What's pop to you? Well, he's my fiancé. Not that we're engaged or anything like that. Well, you would fall in love and go away. Well, this is a fine welcome home. Losing the only man who was ever kind to me and promised to remember me in his will. I never have any luck. <laughs> There's one thing certain, though. What Pop says, you won't have him long. Now, we'll wish Pop no bad luck, if you don't mind. <laughs> and now we'll let Paulette call up Day Emery and have him throw a party for you tonight. And have him bring along some nice friend of his who's fun who'd like to meet a nice girl who's fun, too. You don't mind doing that for Jean, do you, Paulette? Sure, I'll call him. Give me a wish to no, never mind. Well, there's one thing that's got to be understood before Jean meets any friend of mine. And that is she's got to lay off him. Now, why bring that up? Because you never lay off anybody who belongs to someone else. Oh, is that so? You never want anyone else to have any fun. Oh, is that so? So you don't meet any friend of mine until you sign a paper saying you've changed your habits. I'll change any habits of mine that don't suit you the day you change your face for what I can stand. You don't have to stand anything about me any more than I do about you, you poor blonde boy. You call me a blonde boy, slapping both of you. She can't help it if she's Italian. Oh, dirty little... Hi, Jean. Oh, who started it? Oh, I did, of course. There, you see? Well, she may have started it, but you gave a good cause. Oh, you always take her side. I take the side of the party that's right, and you know it. 
Well, if you don't stop scrapping, I'm going to send you both home. They dignified. And it's big mouth. You got to run. Oh! Oh, gee. I'll give you my red fox fur. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> well, anyhow. Hey, hey, oh, oh, oh. You will call up Dave, won't you? Sure, I will. Yeah. Tell him not to bring any bromides. mines. Get a regular guy on nothing. Having girl trouble, Dave? Girl trouble? No, Father. Why? Because you rolled your dice, but you haven't moved your men. Oh, I'm sorry, Father. Six and a five, uh huh. All right, W. Take it. Yes, Billings, what is it? A telephone for Mr. Day, sir. Telephone, telephone. Mm -hmm. Tell them he'll call back. It's a lady, sir. Of course it is. It's always a lady. I believe it's the lady, Mr. Day. You'll have to excuse me, Father. Hello? Oh, hello, darling. Listen, darling, will you be sweet and give us a party tonight? Of course, I'd love to. Well, now, you've got to bring along someone nice for Gene. Who will you get? I'm not going to tell you now. I'll wait till you meet him. Goodbye, darling. Wild Oats, Billings. Wild Oats. They're only young ones, sir. I haven't forgotten. Your place. Oh, maybe it was a polo. I wouldn't forget you. You are good looking, you know. Yes, isn't he? 
hands. I never forget a face. I'll sit by you. Only that happens to be my place. Well, all right, all right. I don't see why you have to be so fussy. We go. Beggars can't be choosers. Any old port at all. You have introduced me, Day, or do I do that for myself? Not unless you insist. I always like to know who I'm talking to. You mean to say you didn't know he was Boris Feldman? No, I didn't. What was for refreshment? Well, how about this? Well, that's the best you've got. Allow me. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, caviar? Don't speak of food while I'm drinking my dinner. Mm-hmm. I'll just take a sandwich if you don't mind. Uh, what kind? A large club. The lady will have a large club. One large club. One large club. Anything for me, old man. I'm having mine. Hey, what do you do? I play the piano. Is that all? Well, I took tambourine lessons, but I gave them up when I was very young. Oh, dear. A comic as well. He happens to play it a little better than anyone else in the world. You heard me. Why shouldn't I have heard you? I'm allowed in public places. I thought you two could get together about music. I take piano lessons myself, Mr. Feldman. I just love music. Yeah, I hate it. But you like mine. We shall see. Oh, quit crab eating. Don't spoil the party. I'm going home. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know where home is, but I know I'll find it a lot quicker by myself than I will hang around with you two four flushes. I come back from Paris after all I've been through, and you talk big about helping me get a new start in life. And the best you can offer me is a piano player. Oh, gee, for Pete's sake. Piano player, that's a good one. Not a piano player, a pianist, please. Uh, it's the same thing to me. Yeah, but this piano player happens to get paid $2,500 every time he plays. How often do you play? Well, never less than three, never more than four times a week. Three or four times a week at 2500 Well, I'm not too proud to apologize. Well, now that we've got that point, let's go. It's not bad, this, huh? I'll tell you more about it in the morning. What do you mean? You can tell an awful lot about the liquor you drink the night before by where you find your hat the next morning. <laughs> so your first name is Jim. That's the first name, yes. What year were you in the college? Ask me no questions and I'll tell you no lies. But it was years and years ago. <laughs> I want to talk to you in the bar. What's your pleasure? Boris Feldman's a great fellow. Wasted on Jean. Jean isn't wasted on him. So it seems. That's the point, isn't it, darling? I'd like to say something personal. Well, go on, play it. You're an Italian, aren't you? You must be a traveling man. In a way. But I know women. Blonde Italian is the most beautiful thing on earth. You Russian? Russian from the Bronx. Oh, okay. Hello, Pop. Did you call me up? No, I'm not at home. I'm with Jean and Polaire. Where? Oh, in a sort of a drugstore. You're giving more trouble than anything else in the world. Well, it might be your income tax. It might be your waistline. Neither. Getting rid of the women who fall in love with me. No. Oh, I'm serious. Women who love me never want to let me go. Oh, how do you account for that? Well, in every man's life, he has one dream that he feels sure will never come true. He dreams that there's always some woman somewhere who'll say, uh, nothing ever lasts. I knew this wouldn't, but I never had anything like it before, so good luck and goodbye. You're leading up to calling me your dream girl? I may be, but you're going to fall in love with me. No, tell me more. I'm going to play just for you. Play the piano? Tell you, if you don't fall in love with me after I play for you tonight, you can take the price of a mink coat home with you. Five thousand dollars, what do you say? The bet? I can't say what I get if I win. Well, I thought that was understood. Anything, everything. Oh, I'll take you up. <laughs> Waiter, I'm looking for a place to wash my hands. There's a room there, Marvin. Gentlemen, but don't let that stop you. You go right in. Yes, sir. Pardon me, is 
that yours? Yes. Well, just to make it legal, you bet this against the mink coat. Is it done? Is it done? Mister, I'm human. No. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, two o'clock. Closing time. The stickies are the close of the two o'clock. It's practically a tea room. I will be the closing time. Can we just have a head on the flash and take a look at it? Well, I think we'll have to go before they put us out. <laughs> Look at me, I gotta go. Breakfast at nine in the morning. Can you imagine anyone getting up at nine in the morning? Yes. They're gonna be home. Huh? What do you want there? Come to my place. Did you get a telephone call, huh? Where do you live? Central Park West. I think we'll go to my place. sleeping on Polaire. Well, she said she didn't like piano players. I know, but that's a fine way to act when anyone invites you to their house. That's that. Well, should we have some light? Certainly, if it doesn't disturb your friend. What time is it? Why, it's after four. After four? Gee, I gotta go home. I can't sit up all night listening to you play the piano. I got a golf lesson at nine in the morning. I'll go upstairs and get my coat. Oh, where's something for it first? Gee, boy, you've been holding out on me. I didn't know you could really play. I can, really. But you can, really. I knew you had something. I see you think I've got a pretty talented girl, Feltman. Yes, that's why I want to talk to her. I don't want to talk. I hate people who can talk. So do I. But tell me, where did you learn what you know about music? Somebody sat me down on a piano stool when I was a kid. What made you get up? That's a long story, and I hate long stories. Yeah, so do I. Come on, everybody, let's have a little drinky. Come into my study. I can talk to you better there, and we won't disturb your friend's slumber. Well... Perhaps a little more music might help. Well, I'll be... I can make it honest to you. No, you couldn't. I haven't got the gut. Now, don't talk like a fool. Why not? I am a fool. I've got just enough sense to realize that you're a divine artist, which I object to. Well, why do you object? Because nothing that's divine is any fun. And anything that's not fun is out as far as I'm concerned. I mean, get this. Oh, I'd rather not. Well, I'm not proud. Oh, they all Jean. They isn't enjoying this any more than you are. Well, why doesn't he stand up for his rights then and do something? Right? I haven't any right. Polaire's not my property. Well, Feldman's mine. All the ought to pick from, and you have to bring a piano player. What's wrong with that? I'm not worried. Don't lie to me. I'm not lying. Anyway, I think this party's seen better days. Why don't we all go out somewhere for breakfast? Yes, well, I'm for that. I'd do anything to get that Kentucky Bell out of here. Playing the piano for my personal property. I can make you work. I tell you, I'm too lazy. I'm no good. I know I'm no good. If you're good enough for Boris Feldman, you're good enough for the world. Um. Would you kindly leave us alone? I just wanted to tell you that Mr. Emery's taking us all out to breakfast. Well, if he takes you out, I'll be perfectly satisfied. No man living can make a crack like that to me and get away with it. Dave, would you mind stepping here with us half second? Sure. Sure.
I don't want to take advantage of my friend's day. But you're very fond of this girl. I made her a proposition. Let her study with me for two years and I'll make her rich and famous. Well, I don't see where that's taking advantage of me. She won't have me make her anything but notorious. I don't want to be famous and I don't have to be rich. I never give advice except when I'm tight, so... I think you better take him up and do what he tells you. Even if that washes up everything between you and me? Well, why does that follow? Doesn't it, Feldman? Obviously. She'll have to travel with my company, go on my tours, spend her summers in Europe studying. Now, will you tell her that I can offer her more than you, or will you stand in her way? Oh, I don't want to stand in her way, but... Well, there may be some point in my stepping out of your way. I've chosen. I'm bad for him, but I may be of some use to myself. When do we stop? Right away. <laughs> That's a little sudden. No, it isn't. It's better to have everything straight like that. It's, it's simpler. You are a sport, day. Oh, that's all right. But, uh, don't forget me if you fall off the piano stool. None of that. You're mine now, and I'm jealous. Always in the course of a long evening, somebody always drinks a toast. Usually with less excuse than I've got. Well, here's to Polaire's future. Polaire's future? Why? Because she's promised to give me her hand. I did not say her hand, and I'm going to help her to make them famous. He thinks he can teach me to play the piano well enough to get paid for it. She's promised to work. I'll get you some coffee. I'll help you. Thanks, though. I keep my coffee in the strangest place. In Just a moment. Do I win that bet? What bet? Did you or did you not bet me a mink coat that you'd make me love you? I did. Well, you haven't made me. Five thousand dollars, didn't we say? Five thousand, yes. Count them yourself. That's what I call high, wide, and handsome. Handsome is as handsome does. I even return your handkerchief. You can keep that. Thanks, though. No, I didn't win it. I've won much more. I can't remember when I've had a more profitable evening. I'll be going home, I guess. Wait a minute. I suppose you know you've made a little fool of yourself. I've always known that, my dear. Oh, yeah? Well, this party certainly died to death. I'm going home. What's your hurry? I'm not thinking of going yet. All right, then take off your coat and stick around a while. I'm cold. All right, keep it on, then. Come on, Dave. Let's go in the kitchen and get some coffee. Cold? What's this? Well, when I did that, I was hot. Your methods have never been exactly subtle, have they? They usually work. Which one were you planning that for, Feldman or Day? My business. I'm sorry, Jean. Can I help it if Feldman likes me? Try it on Day. He's a swell guy. Oh, don't bother me. I'm busy. I thought you'd gone. I'm waiting for the Marines to drag me out. I've done my best to get rid of them. I'd rather you told them that I'd gone home. You're shy. I like that. I'm just not used to letting people in on my business the way you do. Where are you going? I'm going home to get a few things. Well, it's, uh, it's just ten minutes to five. I'll give you those ten minutes. I'll be back. No, not while day is still here. Has she gone? Yes, she's gone. I'm going too. Well, goodbye. 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 Goodbye.
even suspect we've overstayed our welcome. You may be right there, too. Get your own hat and coat, Dave. I'll do that. Has Jean gone yet? Yes, she's gone home. I wonder where that is. I haven't the faintest idea. Well, no hard feelings, I hope, old man. Of course there are. Still, I wish you luck since we may not meet again. Good night. Good night. Good night. Our program continues with Lucille Oliver singing Tossie's Goodbye. Well. I say to give you back your 5,000. Why? Ask me no questions and I'll tell you no lies. Keep it. I didn't win it. Oh, yes, you did. You didn't try to make me love you, Feldman. You want me to? Well, I'm still here. As I see you are. Well, let's have a little drinky and then I'll go. Sorry to hurry you, my dear, but, um... How many blonde Italians have you known? Only one. Oh, I'm hot. Oh, I wonder where my dress is. I did have a dress once. Pardon my appearance. I find it hard to. Oh, this is the most wonderful couch in the world. Mind if I stay here? Just what do you want? I want to take piano lessons. You won that bet. Did I? Didn't you want to win it? I'm afraid I did. Don't go. Let it ring. I'm sleeping. No. Don't go away. They've gone. come out of Mr. Feldman's apartment since I left? A lady and a gentleman together. Only one lady? That's all, ma'am. Take me down. Yes, sir. I like you, Dave. Don't take things too hard. Oh, I like you too, Shatsy. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Driver, drive around the park. Drive around the park for a while.
pretty girl. I'll do, buddy. Call an ambulance. Excuse me, have you a little boy? Come and help me with this drive. Hello? Yeah, this is she. Who? Hospital? What hospital? Taxi accident? Is she hurt badly? I'll be right over. Well, it was a milk wagon. Either my driver was a drinking man or he doesn't like milk wagons. I never should have let Jean have my bad dime. Well, I'll call Day. Oh, no. No, that's all washed up. Well, where was Feldman? Yeah, that was too good to be true. Well, what do you want to do? Get well, get my bad dime back, and get good and even. Good and even with who? With that big stiff Jean. Jean? Yes. She beat me to it. Jean and Feldman. What? I wonder how they'll get on. you up to tell you that from now on I sleep when I please and with or without music. Well, don't write wire. Emma, come here. Take us the best book and get on that telephone. We've got to see where we go from here. Yes, Miss Jean. Where do I begin? Start at the beginning and go right through. I'm back in circulation. <laughs> you hear from Shotzi and Polaire? I'd rather not go into that. I don't hear anything. What do you hear from Polaire? Oh, nothing. I thought she's where I saw her last in Feldman's flat. Well, now that we've got that off our minds, what have you got in your hip? <laughs> Why he didn't get there. I'm sure he said lunch and I waited as long as I could. I had this appointment at 3.30, you know. But if he comes in, ask him to call me here. I wouldn't worry if I were you. Life isn't so easy these days that a girl can afford not to worry. Who's in that booth? That's Miss Sutro? I believe it is, Miss. Who's in that next booth? It's your friend, Miss Lawrence. Well, hello, you. Hello, yourself. Well, you've been keeping yourself. Ask no questions, I'll tell you no lies. Where's Polaire? Ask me any questions you want to. I can keep my trap shut. How's Feldman? Oh, we parted. Huh. I knew that wouldn't last. Yeah, our temper was worse suited. Who'd you have lunch with today? Oh, what's it to you? Well, I don't know if it's anything to me, only I had a luncheon engagement with Pops and he didn't keep it. Hmm. So a little snooping seems in order. The gentleman you spoke of is here, Miss Lawrence. Oh, ask him to wait. Ask him to come in. This is my territory, Al Capone. Knowing your habits, I want to be sure of that. Oh, hello. Oh. Uh, you've met Mr. Emery, haven't oh, you? hello, Chassie. You know I've met him. <laughs> she thought you were pop. No. <laughs> I can't imagine why he's so fretful about pop. Are you two playing around together now? Well, he's my fiancé. Not that we're engaged or anything like that. That's like you. What is? Trying to take your best friend's man away from her. And you don't look so hot either. What do you mean? She gave him up, didn't she? Hey, we're going out to have a little drink. You want to join us? This way to the hearing from me department. Say anything you've got to say about me, you'll say before me. I wouldn't say what I've got to say about you before anybody. <laughs> now listen, young man, I've got news for you. At least I think a lot less of you if it isn't news. I'm not supposed to tell you, but now that I see what that baby's up to. Did you know the Polaire's been in the hospital? What? Yeah, ever well, since that night at Feldman. What hospital? Where? Well, what hospital? I'm sorry about that drink. I'm going. Hey, you can't get away with that. Emma, will you? Can't you let that stuff out of me? I can't get out of here. I can't get out of here. That 
because it's new. This because it's me. Well, I always knew you were a prince, but I never dreamed you were such a glutton for punishment. The recipient places the ring on the usual finger and kisses the donor. Wait a minute. How do you know I won't walk out on you again? Well, if I make you happy, you won't want to. And if I don't, well, I deserve to lose you. Talk to your father first. Till then, I'm not holding you to any promises made. Except one. What's that? That you still like me. Thanks, darling. <laughs> well, we'll bury the hatchet. And have a little drinky, huh? Well, all right, yes. <laughs> oh, remember what happened to Mary Queen of Scots? Yeah. <laughs> it's for you, Mr. Oh, well. Hello? Yes, this is she. Who? What's the matter? It's Pop. What about Pop? He's passed. Where? Out. Oh. That makes me feel a little queer. Yeah, me too. That makes me realize how fond I was of Pop. <laughs> me too. Oh, I'm going to miss Pop something terrible. Me too. You? Any objection to being missing Pop? Yes, I have. Why? Well, it don't seem respectful to his memory. <laughs> oh, is that so? And when I think of the way you took advantage of him. Me? Here's you. How'd I ever take advantage of Pop? Were you ever after anything but his money? Oh, I like your nerve. And when I think I could have saved him from you if I had the time. You say Pop from me? Maybe it isn't too late yet. Too late for what? For me to get busy? Call out the reserves? Get into action and leave you holding the bag. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Come here, come here, Take this thing off my head. What are you going to do? Come here. Will you come in, please? You ladies will sit down. I'll call Mr. Garrett. Pardon me. I don't like this. Well, you've got to go through with it. How do you do? How, How do you do? do? Which is Miss Sutro? I am. This is Miss Wynn. I have heard both your names. This is a painful occasion, ladies. There is. My client and your late friend, as you know, Miss Sutro, was a man who all his life did things his own way. Are you trying to tell me something's wrong? No, my dear lady, not a thing. Only a little ceremony, for which my client left most strict instruction. Is the other lady ready? Yes. yes. What other lady? lady? Just a moment, please. Uh, show her in. You sit there, Miss Lauren. You may proceed. health and body, I wish to make a few remarks in my own voice to supplement what I have already put in writing. <coughs> <coughs> oh, poor Pops. He has a cold. He had a cold. I have of late years been associated with three young women, known as Jean, Shatsy, and Polaire. For Polaire, I have only the highest but most disinterested esteem. I have embodied my feelings for Shatsy in my will. I take this means, however, of warning my executors against the scheming of the one named G. That's a lie. I knew you'd say that. Sit down.
Is there anything else, madame? No, I don't think so. What do you want, Shotsley? A large uh, club. Say, remember, stupid, we're ordering breakfast. Try to have it here before the middle of the afternoon. Yes, madame. Can you beat that? A yes, madame waiter and a yes, ma'am menu. I'm glad I told Day to bring his father here this afternoon and not for lunch. Wouldn't it be a terrible mistake if they came for dinner? Not a chance. They'll be here this afternoon at four. Hello? What do you want? It's G. What do you want to see us about? I'll make it some other time. I'm busy this afternoon. All right, then. Three o'clock. Oh, will that be all, madame? That's all. Scram. Yes, madame. No, no. Wait a minute. Is that all the clothes you've got? I don't think I understand you, madame. Well, have you got a real butler suit? Can you get a real butler suit? Uh, yes, madame. Very well, then, Jeeves. You're going to be our butler for about half an hour this afternoon. When that dame shows up, we'll show her a family retainer that'll knock her eye out. Gee, that's great. You won't get over that for a year. You'll be back here at three o'clock with that butler suit and says tea. We won't want you for long. Now you understand? Yes, madame. Yes, miss. Was she in? I'll see if she's at home, miss. What name shall I say? Lawrence. Won't you be seated, miss? Just a moment. And by any chance is your name Meadows? No, miss. Herbert Scroggins. That's all I wanted to know. Well, well, well. Gee, my dear, how are you? No one knows. Well, if you came here to be insulting, I can come here with a handful of calling cards. Gee, my dear. Oh, it's simply wonderful to see you again. You're looking too marvelous yourself, my dear. Believe it or not. Why, we're forgetting Jean hasn't had her tea yet. Uh, shall I call Joan Sharpsey? Why not? Oh, here he is now. How are all the other slaves on the old plantation, Herbert? Well, there you have me, Mum. Mm -hmm. uh, shall I call? If you will. A uh, cream? No. How wise she is not to take cream. You have two or three pounds for the good, aren't you? <clears throat> That's a cute little jacket. Where? Yes. Where did you get it? I shot it in my own kitchen. Where'd you get that thing you're wearing? Oh, this? Oh, the man who made it is so well known, you never even heard of him. Oh, certain I. It don't last till you get it home. Yeah? Well, it lasted till it got home to me. Look. Got these since I saw you last. They're real. I knew they were. I can always tell real girls. Even when they're such little ones. Oh, is that so? Well, some of these are so little. And some of them aren't so real, are they? Oh, is that so? Well, I didn't come here to be high-headed, and nobody gets away with what it. What did you come here for? I came here because I made up my mind you better be told where you get off. Nobody gets away with double-crossing me. Who's double-crossing you? Now, don't tell me you didn't put pops up with that photograph, gang. Oh, my Jean, I swear. Well, I suppose you didn't take Day Emery away from me just as I got started on him. And fully, I gave him up and said I could have him. Well, I didn't want to give him up, and you knew it anyway, oh, didn't you? Oh, never mind what I did. Hello? Oh, yes, dear. When? Now? Well, all right. You've got to go. 
I better watch go. They're on the way. They just tell us. Yeah, you gotta go. We got business here this afternoon. It's private business. Well, is it so private you can't let an old friend in on it? Yes, Jean. I'm sorry, but it is. Well, that's what I call carrying things too far. Keeping secrets from your oldest friend. Throwing your oldest friend out in the street. I'm sorry, Jean. Oh, why should I be interested anyway? Oh, Jean, to the love of my deal. I'll have to tell her. Oh, no, no, don't tell me. Oh, no, don't tell me. If you're so private, don't think of telling me. What is it? I'm going to be married. You're going to be married? Who to? Well, now, I don't want it talked about, but... Day Emery. You're going to marry Day Emery? Yes. And he's bringing his father here. Now? Yes, to look me over. And, well, you see, Jean, Day wouldn't want anyone else here. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, uh, why not let the old man look us all over? Oh, no. No, I'd rather not. Oh. Well, of course, if that's the way you feel about it, it's all right with me. Um, well, anyhow, let's all have a little drinky, just for good luck, huh? Nobody has any little drinkies here this afternoon. This is over and that's that. Well, all right. I'll go. I'll do more than that. I'll take back all I said. Now, look, we're old friends. I always liked you two guys. Now, this is no time for hard feelings. Let's shake. You're a great scout, Jean. You're no slouch yourself. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll be seeing you. So, Jean. What? Just a moment. Here are your gloves. Take them with you so you don't have to come back after them. Thanks. Are you sure you've got everything? You didn't hide a horse and buggy around here, did you? Oh, Polaire. How about taking your wedding present from me now? Oh, gee. Yes, why not? Oh, you're crazy. No, I want you to have them. That's my business. Oh, no, I don't too much. Possibly. But I want you to yeah. have them. I'm sorry you didn't get me out in time. Hello, darling. Where's your father? Isn't he coming? Oh, he prefers that I brought it to him. You don't mind, darling, do you? Oh, all right. I'm scared, but I don't mind. Come I'll on. get your coat. I feel just like a mama, which I hope you appreciate. I do. How do you do, Mr. Emery? Oh, how do you do? I believe congratulations are in order. Yes, they are. Yes, I haven't seen you since the day of the big wind. Here's your hat and coat. I don't know why I should be so excited about a wedding when I think of all the times I could have gotten married. Yes. Good luck, old dear. Thanks, Jean, for everything. Don't mention Come it. Come on, Paul. I want my bad dime. Why? Well, you know why. She's cuckoo enough to believe in the full thing. Yeah, so am I. You don't want your bad dime. Come on. Oh, but I do. Why can't you have a good luck? I do my bad dime. I'm just saying. Now, Miss Torhead, you can have your little drinky. I'll open up a pint for you. Pint? What teetotaler ever invented pint? Did you break anything? No, but I will. Now, you wait here and I'll go and find Father. I'm scared. I know you think I'm not half good enough for you. Oh, darling. Miss Gwynne, my father. How do you do, Miss Gwynne? How do you do, Miss Danbury? Hey. What? Yeah. Just a minute. Come on. Oh, you join us later. Oh, I want to Never mind, oh, Father. Do as I say. 
You see, Miss Gwynne, I wanted a few minutes with you alone. Uh, will you give me some tea? Why, yes, of course. Strong, with cream and sugar. Well, I'll open another pint. Oh, they're both Paul Ayers, but she won't mind. Now, I've had enough. You've had what? I've had enough. I'm going home. Why? Well, I never knew you to stop on one drink before. I'll be a taxi, please. I'll be right down. What are you up to? Ask me no questions. I'll tell you no lies. Where are your pearls? My pearls? Oh, Paul Ayers got them. Paul Ayers gave them back to you. No, I don't think so. Why, so? Well, I haven't got them, have I? Well, you must have put them down someplace. Well, if I did, you keep them. They're Say, I can't understand why you're so careless about real pearls. Well, why should I worry? They're safe here, aren't they? You're up to something. Oh, what would I be? Up I to? don't know. But you're not going to leave this place till you find those pearls. A great fortune needs a serious master. That's why I can't leave my money to my son. Can't you? Day hasn't shown himself very serious. I've never cared about money. Well, you see, they're not here. Well, they must be here. I thought Paul there give them back here. I was standing right there. It's very funny to me that they're not around. Gee! Hello? Hello, operator. Operator. Now, get this. Miss Lawrence is on her way downstairs for a taxi cab. You send an elevator boy out to get the address she gives the driver. Yeah, now, I'll wait here. But I'm glad Dave's made up his mind to marry at last. No matter who? So long as she marries him for himself, not for his money. I didn't realize Dave would be giving up so much. Oh, not that I mind for myself. But it's hard on him. No, it's good for him to want anyone as much as he wants you. And now that I've seen you, I shan't interfere. Thank you. Shall we call Day now? Yes, please do. Hello? What's that address? What? Call me a taxi. I'm so sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to trouble you for my purse. No. I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to trouble you for my purse. You'll pardon me, won't you? I'm in trouble for my purse. This day is nuts. You're a great scout, Father. When can we get married? Isn't that for the young lady to say? Oh, I'm ready any time. Oh, darling. Why, oh, big pardon, sir. Miss Billy. There's a Miss Lawrence here asking to see Miss Gwynne. Miss Lawrence? Jean. What's she doing here? Why, I can't imagine. A friend of yours? Oh, uh, yes. Can she wait somewhere? She says her business is most urgent, Miss. Well, ask the young lady to come in. All right. Will you come this way, please? Of course, it just kills me to interrupt this session, but I'm afraid I'll have to trouble you for my... Oh. Oh, I beg your pardon. Miss Lawrence, my father. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, I thought you said you had urgent business here, Jean. Yes, it can wait. Um. Why do you go down this street? It's all right, lady. It's the traffic. I know it's the traffic. Why don't you go through the park? Oh, it's just the same any place you go, lady. But don't listen to me about this traffic. Well, how do you indeed? Yes, you were pointed out to me at Earl Carroll's Vanities. Oh, but I've never been to Earl Carroll's Vanities. No? Well, perhaps Mr. Polo at Westchester Duke more. Possible. Yes. Yeah. Or could it have been in the opera? I don't think so. Oh? A horse show? Maybe, yes. Well, it must have been some place. You are good-looking, you know, and I never forget a face. Is that all you came to say, Jean? Well, isn't that an all right thing to say? Sure. Only you came a long way to say it. Oh, I know where I beg your pardon. I know where I saw you before. Where? In the movies. The movies? What are you talking about? Yes, yes. It was about a year ago. Oh, she means the newsreel. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you were in a room boat getting off your yacht. How do you remember that? Oh, I never forget a yacht. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I beg pardon, sir. Uh, yes, Billings, what is it? There's a Miss Silto here asking for Miss Lawrence. Classy. What's she want? Another friend? Why, yes, but but don't ask her in. We'd better go. Come on, Dean. Just a moment. What's your hurry? Uh, Billings, ask the young lady to wait. I've just come. 
I'm sure Mr. Emery doesn't want Well, maybe she doesn't, but I do. Now, look here, Jean. What is there to get so excited about, darling? Well, that's what I don't know. But Jean's here for no good or Shotsy wouldn't come. You'll be sorry you pulled that one, baby. My dear, it's not a... Where are my pearls? How should I know where your pearls are? Did you have her pearls? Certainly she had them. So what were you doing with them? That's a long story, and I hate long stories. I'll tell you what she was doing with them. She wanted to wear them here, so you wouldn't think she was a gold digger. Gee, you've got genius. I'm sorry, Mr. Emery, but they were real pearls, and real pearls are worth money. Of course, she may be playing a joke. Well, I don't play the joke at you, and it's gone far enough. She's trying to make me out a thief. I never thought of such a thing. You must be crazy. I'm not crazy, and I'm not a thief. I gave you back those pearls, and you know it perfectly well. Why, Shasti saw me do it. Shasti? Oh, it is most embarrassing for me. Come on in here with me, Shasti. There's going to be trouble. Oh, I know it. Shasti, you saw me give her those pearls back. Sure, I did. Well, I haven't got them, have I? Of all the low-down frame-ups, you know perfectly well those pearls are in your bag right this minute. Oh, are they? All right. Well, are they here? Are they there? Well, you must have them somewhere on you. Well, search me, then. This is a grave charge you've made, Miss Lawrence. It's a grave charge they've made against me. Fancy me framing an old friend. Well, couldn't they have fallen inside your dress? I think you'd better look. Do you? All right, I will. Well, I'll help you. No, thanks. No, I'll search myself. Now, watch closely, Mr. Emery. See that I don't pull any hoodie tricks. Look, is it there? Is it there? Is it there? Are they there? Now are you satisfied? <laughs> You're laughing at me. I can't help it. Now we'll search Paul Air. No, I wouldn't be fine. Paul Air's got to be cleared. Not Jean's way. I couldn't. Well, we don't have to go that far. With you. Miss Gwynne. You, you. Polaire, dear. So you didn't give him back. But of course I gave him back, and she. Jay, what are you thinking? Oh, I'm thinking this is the rottenest, vilest mess I've ever seen. I see. Well, you better think more than that, Jay, and be quick about it. What else is the for him to think? It is a rotten, vile mess, but that's what you get for playing around with our kind. I'm glad it happened now instead of later. I must have been crazy to think of marrying you. Blair. Gone. Has she gone to your place? I'd give her time to cool off if I were you. And if I were you, well, what? I'd watch out to my father. What? In the presence of the family and intimate friends, including the Duke and Duchess of Ainsley, the Duchess being Mr. Emery's daughter by a former marriage, Mr. Day Emery will act as his father's best man. Uh, have you the ring, Mr. Day? Yes, I've got the ring. And the bride will be given away by her mother. Oh, pardon me. Just a moment. Yes, my love? I don't know why it is, but I don't seem to be able to remember my mother's name. Your mother is Mrs. Randolph Hill of Kansas City. Your father is Colonel Randolph Hill of Kansas City. My father's dead. Your mother's husband may be dead. But your father is Colonel Randolph Hill of Kansas City. Well, anyhow. Oh, uh, now, sir, about placing the string quartet. Oh, yes, I'll come at once. Excuse me, dear. Come with me, Dave. Yes, Father. Pardon me. So, Jeff, dearie, come here. In here, please. Hey, wait a minute. We didn't come for the wedding. We came to see Miss Lawrence. And we'll see Miss Lawrence. Oh, uh, will you wait in the library, ladies? I'll tell Miss Lawrence that you are here. But who should I say? Miss Sears and Miss Buck of Sears Roebuck.
Are you sure you want to go through with this? I want my bad dime back and I'm going to get it. Now for a view of the bride alone. Are you ready, Miss Lawrence? Yes, I'm delighted. Come on, Lloyd. Come on, don't keep Miss Lawrence waiting here. Uh, just hold yourself, Miss Lawrence. Well, we're trying to find the camera. Here, put this camera right here, Miss Lawrence. Say, listen. Do you think there are any detectives around here to put us out? No, they're earning their money drinking the bride's help. Oh, please don't now. Not the Say, cut out the personal remarks and tell me what you two guys are doing here. I want my bad dime. Yeah, Jean, give it to her so she won't be so nervous on the water. Water? What water? We're going to Paris. Paris? Yeah. We're taking the Isle de France, too. When? Today. About the time you're being made an honest woman. Oh, gee, that's great, isn't it? Sure, it's great. So if you don't mind coming across. Sure, I'll come across. George, yes? ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがと
as I am for myself. I'm going to go get married and be stuck on an island with nothing on it but quail. My God, I have some fun. I'm still young. I'm still beautiful. I have everything. Promise I give up all my good times for that old flop. Young girls always have to pay for their mistakes. Poor Jean, she wishes she was going to Paris with us. Don't you, Jean? Well, maybe I do. Are you going to keep going? Oh, yes. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm glad we're going where this stuff grows wild. Yeah, goodbye, Jean. What? Goodbye. You are mumbling. I'm mumbling. I am. Uh... We'll think of you off on your island all covered with quail whenever we eat one. We gotta go. No, no, don't go. We gotta... Now, come on, yeah. Jean, you fuck up. Oh, yeah, we can't go leave you like this. No, you can't go leave me like this. Take me with you. Oh, Jean. Oh, Jean, oh, oh, take me. You can't leave me oh, here. the way I do, it wouldn't be you. Oh, man. no, Jean, you gotta get married. <laughs> got a million and all that junk, why be a hog? Huh? Why be a hog? Sure, that's yes. what I would say. Yes, come on, no, let's go. Come on, we go. Come on, we go. Well, go there. Oh! Yes, out there. Come on, there's people. We go up the back stairs. Out that door. We'll go up here. Come on, get in my door. Come on, you Come on, you're waiting. 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 Come on,
But why? And you dared me to find you. Yes, but now what? Well, you told me to marry a nice girl. I'm not a nice girl. I'm not a nice girl. <laughs> I'm not a nice girl. You've always said that, and I've never believed you. Hey, you! You know, I ought to give you a good balling out for walking out of your father's wedding. Oh. You should ball him out. Sure, wasn't I almost his mama? <laughs> <laughs> hey, isn't that my bracelet? Well, sure, it's a bracelet pop flat. Oh, hey, Jean, for the love of Pete. Well, it looks like it. About that trip to Rome. Huh? Well, uh... You can have the bracelet. You know, I'm sure I've met you before. I never forget a face, and you are good-looking, you know. Come here, I want to talk. Thank you.